Dating in Korea has been a nightmare for me. I don't think I have been to as many dates as I have in the past five years. For the first two years of being here, I went on a lot of dates and most of them resulted in nothing. I did make a couple of friends from Tinder. One of my best friends actually I met through Tinder, but most of the people that I met there, man, I don't have words to describe the experience. All I can say is most of the time I would come back home and be like, what the hell just happened? And this story that I'm gonna share today is not different from what the hell just happened. I arrived in Korea in March 2017. I feel like I always say this every single time I make a video, but I don't always assume that the people who are watching my videos have watched all of the other ones. I arrived in Korea in February 2017 and I was single, ready to mingle. I downloaded Tinder on my first week. It was so exciting. I think this is always a feeling when you download Tinder for the first time or any dating app for that matter. For the first two days <laughs> is fun, it's exciting, it presents a lot of possibilities about who your potential person could be and then after three days you start to feel exhausted and or worn out. At least that's how I feel every single time I have had a dating app. I always want to delete it after two days. But anyways, I was on Tinder and went on my first date with a guy who had broken up with his girlfriend because she moved to England. So we went on one date and it was really good and he asked me out again but we ended up never going to that date because his girlfriend, ex-girlfriend at that point, came back and then they got back together. Hooray! I continued to swap and then I met my very first Korean match. Me and this guy had so much in common. He loves photography, I love photography too. He makes videos, I make videos too. He seemed to be interested in a lot of things that I like, like art, photography, videography, traveling, etc. And he could speak English. And I thought, wow, okay, this is interesting. Our first date wasn't an ideal first date, but also at the same time, it was kind of cool. On our first date, he invited me to a meetup. He was a meetup organizer for people who like to explore around Busan, who like to go to galleries, explore new restaurants, etc. Again, ticking another box. And I thought, wow, he's two years older than me, he's taller than me, he likes photography, videography, he likes to organize things that bring people together for conversations. He dresses well, he looks good. What more can a woman ask for, right? I showed up late for that first meeting and he and his friends who were part of the meetup were already waiting for me by the subway. I underestimated how long it would take me to get there. I got there and they were waiting for me and we took a bus, went to this village, explored, we went to restaurants. We weren't really talking to each other. He was the organizer so he was busy trying to make sure that everyone was okay. And at the same time there was this girl who was so close to him. She would be touching him all the time and I'm thinking, what in the name of polygamy is this? I just met you and we met on Tinder so my assumption is that we have a romantic interest so why then would you bring somebody who seems to be so in love with you? Nobody in the meetup knew that me and him met on Tinder. After eating with everyone in the meetup, we went to his car. So it was me, him and two of his friends including this girl so I didn't know that they were actually friends until that moment and we got into his car. One of the things that made me like him even more was his car. I don't care for people's cars but he had this brown very ugly very old car and I thought wow in Korea you rarely ever see somebody driving an old car and the fact that this guy this young is actually driving an old car that's actually very hot. I just find that to be so refreshing that he was driving an old car. They said they wanted to show me a place and they drove up a hill where you could see all the beautiful lights of Busan. It is possibly one of the most beautiful places ever. So we sat up there and we talked and we took pictures. It was a really, really good time. And then after that, he drove me home. When I got home, he sent me a text, which was basically saying he was sorry that he was not as attentive during the day but he had to take care of everyone and make sure that everyone was ha having a good time. Therefore, he couldn't just focus on me. And I was thinking, oh my God, this guy is just like so perfect. He's selfless and cares about other people, but at the same time acknowledges the fact that he wasn't attentive to me. I told my friends about him immediately because I thought, you know what, 
this is such a good moment and I think if my friends watch this <laughs> they will be confused because I never told them that we met on Tinder I told them that we met on the meetup because at that point in my life I was actually extremely embarrassed to say that I met people on Tinder we continued to text for a while one day he asked me out on an actual date and we were going to go to a restaurant together and have dinner and then have drinks so we met in the subway this time he wasn't driving his car he was taking the subway because he was going to drink. Again, responsible, check. We went to the restaurant that he had picked. When we got there, he made me try all these different meals. And I think to him, it was sort of exciting as well to teach me about Korean food and Korean culture. I was happy to learn these kinds of things from him. However, while we were there, first huge red flag came. He was waving in my face like, okay, dude, this is not it. He pushed food towards me and then he said you need to eat more you are very skinny i have always been somebody who is very very self-conscious especially because i'm skinny but i come from a family of skinny people i don't like it when people assume that i am skinny because i do not eat enough it's always been offensive to me when somebody calls me skinny, I don't like it. I don't take it as a compliment. And then in this case, obviously it wasn't a compliment. It was more like, you look like you starve yourself. So eat some more. I kept quiet and continue to eat. But what happened was after he said that, I couldn't eat more. It was like my stomach just shut down and my whole body just shut down because I was being told that I needed to eat more. So I couldn't eat more. I just sat there trying to force myself to eat the food that was in front of me while trying to maintain this conversation and act like I wasn't offended. While we were sitting in the restaurant, the friend who I had thought was his girlfriend sent him a text and told him that she and other people that were in the meetup were in this area and they were gonna go bowling and maybe we should join them. So we decided, okay, it's cool, let's go join them. He paid for the food and everything all by himself. He didn't wanna split. And then we went to join the others. So we were bowling, it was fun. And then we went to a pub, we sat there, we were having some drinks, it was hella fun. Around midnight, he says to me, hey, I have to go home because I want to take the last subway. So do you want to go home or do you want to stay here with them? And I thought, you know what, I've met these people and I trust them, even though this is only the second time that I'm meeting them, I think I'm going to be fine being here with them because I thought I'm gonna go home and then do what it's a Friday night he left he decided to go to a different place but before we could go he came back and I asked him oh what happened and he told me that the uh, last train had already left and so he decided that instead of getting a taxi home he was going to stay with us soon after that we all got up and we're dressing up to go to a different place you know in Korea you go you have multiple rounds of drinks you have like round one round two so I think at this point we were gonna go to like like our third place and everyone was like getting ready he looks at me and says no lu 10,000 I'm standing there in confusion okay 10,000 for what and he said um 10,000 for the food you didn't eat a lot so just give me 10,000 and I'm thinking okay I'm confused but then because sis will always give people benefit of a doubt regardless of what's going on. I thought, you know what, maybe he didn't bring enough money to party the whole night with us. And so this, us going to multiple places right now is kind of gonna be a financial strain to him. I opened my wallet without even thinking too much about it and I gave him the 10,000. We went to like multiple places where we were trying all these different things, which was mainly for me. Again, everyone else had been in Korea for years. I was the only new person and so they were teaching me about all these different alcohols and we went to drink makoli, soju, like you name it. Ate chicken in some restaurants. It was really fun. At the end of the night we all went to a cafe sat there until the subway started operating again and he walked me to the subway station he gave me a hug and said goodbye and he and that he was going to take a bus and honestly despite the fact that he had asked me for money back i thought you know what this was a really good date i really felt good about it i went home and a text messaging continued because i really did like him and i was telling my friends every single time my friends back home every single time they would be calling me i would be telling them what is going on and it's so exciting because this guy is just so amazing apart from the two things that he already done telling me to eat more and then asking for his money back. So after I think like two weeks at this point, I had known him for a 
approximately a month. We weren't going on dates frequently actually, we were going on dates every now and then. So after two weeks, he asked me out on a date again. He was like, okay, do you wanna like do something again? And I said, okay, how about this time I do all the planning and you just show up. And plus I wanted to try out a new Italian restaurant I had discovered in my area. So I thought, you know what, let me try it out with him. On this particular day, he came to my area where I stayed and I went to pick him up by the subway. But before we could go to the restaurant, I took him to my apartment. <laughs> Not like that. I took him to my apartment because I was in a hurry to get him from the subway that I forgot my wallet in my apartment. So he came in and just stood like a tree, literally not moving much. And he looked so visibly uncomfortable to be in there. It was actually kind of cute. We went to an Italian restaurant. I absolutely love Italian food. And again, this time around, it was even better. Like the conversations were just so good. He was talking about like his future plans and I was sharing mine and it was great. When we finished eating, I then opened up my wallet to signify that, hey, we can split the bill. Cause I don't like money conversations at all. Like they make me extremely uncomfortable. But I thought, you know what, if I open my wallet, then he will see that I am willing to split and then maybe we can have the conversation about splitting. But you know what he did? He got up, went to the till and just paid for everything himself. And I thought, okay, cool. I'm not gonna complain that you wanna pay for everything. I'm not gonna even ask you about it. It's fine. Then we decided to go to a pub, find a place to drink. We were walking around in my area, which was possibly one of the most uncomfortable situations I've ever been in because while we were walking together, I could see that people were talking about me or us. And at one point I asked him, are people talking about us? And he said, yes. And I said, what are they saying? And he said, you don't want to know. So till this day, I still don't know what they were saying, but I know that maybe it was a good idea that I didn't know, you know, because sometimes when you hear bad things about yourself, it can do some major emotional damage. So I never knew what they were saying. But anyways, we went to this bar. It was a three-story building that had a rooftop. So you buy your drinks on the ground floor and then you can take them upstairs. So we bought our drinks and again, he paid for the drinks and we went to sit at the roof and we were just talking for hours. You know, when you're speaking to somebody and you don't have to think about what to say, but the conversation is just flowing. There are no awkward silences. After that, he told me again that he needed to catch the subway. So around 11.30ish, I walked him to the subway. I was so happy and I was thinking, this could potentially be my boyfriend. He seems to just be amazing in a lot of ways. While I was walking up the stairs, I got a text from him and I thought, wow, he misses me already. <laughs> and the text said 20,000, literally just that number, 20,001. I replied 20,001 for what? And he said for the food and the drinks. And I asked, do you make girls pay you back after you've been on a date with them? And he said, lol. I got instantly drained. I went home and I asked my friends about it. Like, hey guys, what would you do in this situation? And they told me, don't pay him. Just leave him all the way alone, but don't pay him. But I also have a lot of pride. I never want a person thinking that, ooh, you that person, you ran away with my money. So I asked him for his banking details and he sent them. <laughs> I thought he wouldn't send them, but he sent them. And then I decided I wasn't gonna pay him that night. The following morning, I sent him the money. And that was the last time I went on a date with him because I figured, you know what, there is no way this is ever gonna work out. There is no way I'm ever gonna go on a date with somebody who doesn't communicate the fact that they want me to pay for my own food or drinks or whatever, but pays and then sends me bills. I don't like that. I don't like that at all because I would rather we split 50-50 I don't care about that. I know a lot of women are like, men should pay for everything, for me, but for me, I don't care about that. Like if you want me to pay 50% of the bill or whatever, just say it, but don't pay for everything and then just send me a bill afterwards because then it's not a good representation of who you are as a person. However, we ended up being friends and we ended up being friends because I became really close friends with the girl I thought was his girlfriend. Because I was friends with her and she had been friends with him for a really long time, I didn't really want 
her to choose between the two of us because what if she wanted to do something that involved the two of us and so for me it was easy to just say you know what I really did like this guy but at the same time I'm okay with us just being friends. I don't think it's a matter of cultural difference the fact that he kept on asking for his money back after going out with me. Maybe there is something that I'm just not understanding here because to me no matter how much I try to rationalize it it just does not make sense. Like why would you as a person do that? I can never understand that at all. I just could never. Yeah I just wanted to share this story because this was quite a weird experience for me. It was something that till this day doesn't make sense. Again I don't know if I am missing something here or if this is something that may be normal somewhere in the world but for me it was my boy and I hated it and yeah if you've watched this video until now I appreciate you so much for watching and I will see you on the next one in Korea goodbye